Hi, welcome to Distinti Definition number four, quantifiable versus unquantifiable systems. In this video, I will explain what, the, what a quantifiable and what an unquantifiable system are, how to identify such systems and why this is important to us. Now, the purpose of these definition videos is these video, these definitions are required for a lot of things going on here. The rules of acquisition require these definitions. The papers on electrogravity require these definitions. And the final coup de grace for quantum mechanics all require these definitions in place. And instead of having to include these definitions in each of the videos, I'm just creating this definition series to get these definitions quickly out and locked down so that we can go forward and use them. So I'll be referencing these definition videos from the other videos. And you should know where to find them. You'll be able to find them at the distinti.com website. I, I don't like trying to put little links in the YouTube thing because it's just a pain in the neck. It's much easier for me to put them on a website and you can go look them up on your own. Um, so on the distinti main page, there will be one link there for the definitions. So a quantifiable system is any observable phenomenon can be quantified, measured, and counted. Okay, in other words, if something can affect something else, that effect can be quantified, measured, and counted. It doesn't really matter what it is. Okay, an unquantifiable system are those systems that we are completely unaware of. An example, if we go back to Ben Franklin's time and we were to bring a set of walkie-talkies we could demonstrate to Ben Franklin that radio waves exist. Okay, but in his day and age, the technology for acquiring and amplifying and discriminating those radio waves out of space doesn't exist yet. And so even though Ben Franklin could have knowledge now of this, he couldn't do anything on the knowledge because the technology to measure and quantify those radio waves don't exist in his time. And that leads us to an interesting thing. Are there things in our world that exist that we're just unaware of because we do not yet possess the technology to detect them? That is a very interesting and salient point of all this, of everything in science, that we may be totally oblivious to stuff all around us that exists that we just not have yet developed the technology to, to uh, detect. And let me give you a, a weird example. Let's say ghosts do exist. Well, we haven't detected, have not developed any way of detecting ghosts or the afterlife or any of that stuff. Okay, so maybe that does exist. Maybe just we just have not detected a way to, uh, to have not developed a way to detect it. Okay, okay, there are other types of unquantifiable systems, like for example, dark matter. Dark matter is something that we have to put into the cosmology equations to make galaxies work the right way. Okay, so dark matter is more of something that we have to add to make our equations come out right. We have not ever been able to detect dark matter, but we're theorizing exists because we're seeing some kind of effect that we can't explain. So this is a case where we're taking the effect before having understanding of what the system is that causes that effect. Okay, I'm going to show you when we get into ethereal mechanics that this dark matter thing is actually comical. Um, they chose the right name for it, and I'll show you why they can't detect it. It's really funny. Um, it really is. It's hysterical. Anyway, next. Okay, what's the importance of, of saying something's quantifiable or unquantifiable? Okay, because if it's quantifiable, it's useful. And the concept of utility being useful is very important into the rules of acquisition and all of science actually, because the rules of acquisition are a system of rules that I developed to help make scientific uh, advancement easier. Okay, and only a system that can be quantified and counted can be useful. In other words, if you can quantify the effect of A on B, then you can make B much more useful. Let me give you an example. Okay, so we observe, let's say we go back before we knew that fire was a chemical reaction, but so some caveman observed that fire consumes wood to give off heat and light. Okay, so you could develop a system, you know, where you, you know, number of BTUs per quantity of wood, et cetera, et cetera. And this, this ability to count and quantify 
allows you to design a wood burning stove of proper size for any habitable structure and to be determined in advance the quantity of wood to stack for the winter. Again, allows you to plan ahead. Like we talked about in the definition of deterministic systems, it allows you to do things now because you know what the outcome will be. In other words, it allows you to see into the future, to know how much wood you will need to stack for the winter. Okay, that's the beauty of all the scientific stuff. It allows you to plan for the future. But here's a trap. Just because we can put fire to good use does not mean we understand what fire is. Okay, today we know that fire is a chemical reaction. But do we really understand what a chemical reaction is? It's governed by the nuclear, nuclear forces. Do we truly all understand nuclear forces yet? Yeah. Do we know, okay, even if we could say, oh, this is all nuclear forces, then what are nuclear forces? It's a never ending layer of onions you have to peel back. Okay, so the third rule of acquisition is very salient about this point. It's called the utility fallacy. And the primary clause of the utility fallacy is, is monkey do does not mean monkey no. Just because we can put all this stuff to great use is not proof we understand the fundamental mechanism of nature that's causing it to be true. All we are doing is mimicking what we see. Okay, and that's what I've said before in the rules of acquisition. Science is nothing more than monkey see, monkey do. It doesn't mean monkey no. Okay. And be aware of anyone who states that their system is unquantifiable. What they're basically claiming is that their system is useless and untestable. Okay, and you would say, well, why would anybody do this? Well, because they're afraid that their system would not stand up to experimental rigor. And if people found out that they were a fraud, they would lose their followership. Let me give you an example of religions. They often say, oh, well, you know, we can't know the mind of God when you, when you get them into a, a logical argument that doesn't make any sense. Okay, and they say, oh, you know, we can't test God, and it's a, it's, it's a sin to test God. It depends on the religion. Some religions are a, a little better, or the other religions are worse. Okay, I'm sorry if this universe were created the way it was, and the Creator gave us a mind to test and question everything, then God is not off limits. Otherwise, He would have developed, designed us not to question anything. Okay. And, and in fact, the Jesuit religion is the Jesuits believe in, in critical thinking, testing, questioning what everything you believe every day. So, you know, it, there's religions out there that are more open to being tested. Thank you. No more voodoo physics. My distinti.com site is finally back up, but it's not complete yet. It's still under construction. Uh, if you like this video, say like. Um, I know this is, wasn't a great video as far as production and quality and all that stuff, but it's a necessary video to support the other stuff that's coming up. Thank you very much.